Brenna's Best. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Brenna Knows Best. I'm your host, Brenna Berg. Hi, how are you? Happy Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever you're listening to this. This week's episode is going to be on communication, and I always do our life updates at the beginning. I'm going to keep them short, okay? Recently, I've been getting a little carried away, and I need to reel it in, okay? And then, of course, questions at the end. However, let's just catch up on the week. Number one, I had my IUD appointment. Okay, and you want to know what? I paid $105, my copay, just to set up another appointment. They didn't do anything. So I got there to this huge like medical facility. Oh my gosh. And when I got there, all the pregnant ladies, because obviously I was in like the labor and delivery section, the cutest pregnant women I've ever seen. I said, damn, maybe I do want to get pregnant. No. I'm kidding. However, the thing is, I say that they're so cute. I bet they're like struggling, not struggling, but like being pregnant for a lot of women is like not an easy feat. And it's kind of misleading because they look so like cute and with it. And I'm sure they're at their doctor's appointment. When I was waiting in the waiting line or in the waiting area, there was a couple that came out with their ultrasound photos. I said, oh my gosh, fresh. I also should have asked my doctor. I'm confused how like, When you get pregnant, let's say, for example, this doctor, okay, let me start from the top. I go in, the nurse, you know, does my weight, does my height. She asks all these questions, your family history, uh, what you're in for, yada, yada. You know, like a nurse always does like the preliminary stuff. And then the doctor comes in. She was like the coolest, sweetest person. I literally talked to her for not even five minutes, but you know, when there's just a vibe, I'm like, I really like you. Like, can we be friends? She was just cool. She was nice. She was amazing. And uh, where was I going with that? Oh, so after I was like, when I get pregnant, like, will I be able to still go to this doctor? Do women that do, and I get it. This might be a really dumb question. Like OBGYN stuff. I understand it's like women reproductive system things. Does she also do like everything leading up to the pregnancy? Like, is this doctor that I'm seeing for my IUD? Does she also do labors? Like, I'm sure she can, but when you specialize, are there separate sections like is she just strictly like a let's say birth control person this sort of house and then there's the the doctors that do like labor and delivery I'm not really sure because I would love to have this woman do everything like in my future as far as my vagina goes that's just my thoughts on that I loved her so basically the nurse gets me ask the questions and the doctor comes in. She's like, okay, IUD. She's like, you're on Kylena. Yep. She's like, you want that one again? I said, yeah, unless you have another recommendation. She's like, if you loved it, it's perfect. She's like the only difference between like, let's say the Kylena and the Myrena. She had the Myrena. She was on an IUD as well. So she was like in the know. I wonder if she has kids. It doesn't matter. Sorry. She was saying that these ones that last longer, like the Kylena is five years. And then the, I think it's called the Myrena. Morena, Morena, I think. It's seven years. It just has more estrogen in it or just more hormones in it to last longer. And she's like, if that was good for you, I think that's great. It was super quick. She was like, okay, we'll just set up an appointment. It takes us two weeks roughly to get the IUD. So set up an appointment out front for three weeks from now. So on June 25th, I think it's a Tuesday, I'm getting my IUD replaced. She gave me a medication. I got it prescribed to my local pharmacy, which I just picked up yesterday, that like softens the cervix to make it easier, I think, for her. And maybe it makes it better for me for her to go in, take it out, and then replace it. I'm super excited. Love it. Amazing. So we're just replacing the IUD. All of that to say, we're getting a new one put in. I think it worked for me. I actually had a friend that reached out to me yesterday. She's like, I saw your video. She's roughly 30, I believe. And she was like, I had a horrible experience getting off of it. And she's like, not hooking up. She's like, doesn't have a boyfriend. She's been off of it for a year and a half. She's getting back on. And I'm like, it's so interesting. I just like love hearing the stories because everybody has a different experience with every single birth control or getting off of it. And it's great to hear just everybody's story. I think that knowledge is power. Knowledge is key. And that's where I'm going to go with that. So IUD check. Next, I saw both of my girlfriends this week. One of them I went to the mall with. She needed a dress for a birthday party. It was a theme. We won't get into that. However, we were at the mall for like five hours. We'd like walk around and we stop and get a La La Land avocado toast. If you guys don't have a La La Land where you live, I crave 
this avocado toast like day in day out and the thing is i can pretty much make it at home and i have when i worked for the nanny fam i would make it for the little girl all of the time it's really just avocado smash up i use everything but the bagel a little salt a squeeze of lime not lime lemon oh but the problem is i've gotten it here every once in a while i just can't make it through sourdough that quickly like i don't necessarily want or need it every day but I do crave it. So La La Land, avocado toast, love you. So then we stop, we would chat, catch up, and then shop around. It was amazing. And then yesterday, my other best friend, she is a dance queen. Okay, she went to a high school specialized in dance. She majored in dance in college. She's iconic. She works for Joffrey Ballet School. Amazing. But she also teaches on the side. So they have their recital tomorrow. And they had their tech theater yesterday where they just like run through everything. So she's like, stop by. I have a break at this time. So I went early. I had Carter drop me off on his way to his haircut appointment at like 1130. She didn't get out till 130. But I got to see like all of these dances. I think dancers are like the coolest type of girls. And I'm not here to shame girls that aren't dancers. I wasn't a dancer. I just feel like they are so confident and so just like cool and outgoing. Like to be able to perform on the stage, maybe it doesn't take that, but I just think they're like so vibrant. And I've always been jealous of dancers. I did gymnastics and dance for a little bit, like kick line, drill, dance until like maybe middle school when other sports started like volleyball and soccer and I wanted to play those more. And I loved it, don't get me wrong. I probably wasn't the best, but I was decent. But I just think dancers like hip hop, oh my gosh. So it was so fun. And then she got a break for like two hours. So we went outside and just sat on a step and caught up and had so many great conversations. I hadn't seen her in a while. I brought her, she's the one who got me my book, The Fourth Wing, but she has been so busy gearing up for recital. Also, wait, should I be giving her details everywhere? It's Kitty Carter's Dance Factory. And Kitty Carter's like Dallas known. She was on the Dallas Cowboys Cheerleader. I think maybe she does all of their choreography. Like she is like essentially famous in Dallas or especially in the Lake Highlands area. And my best friend has known her her whole life. And they're like this. So she helps out a lot around recital. And obviously she choreographs like dances. So anyways... We went outside and got to catch up. And then I left around four. I walked like 20,000 steps because I walked home. And from SMU, it's like a good uh, couple miles. And I already walked that morning for like an hour and a half talking to LaDonna. Anyways, so that was wonderful. Okay, Carter updates. I had a few stories that I wanted to tell you. Number one, we're back to our games, right? And we pulled out Yahtzee the other night. And if you don't know what Yahtzee is, I would hope you do because Yahtzee is my favorite. Me, my brother, and my dad played that game all of the time, right? All of the time. So basically five dice. If you get the same number on each dice, it's a Yahtzee and you get three rolls. So you roll once, right? Let's say you have three fives, a two, and a three. Okay, you keep the fives, then you get another roll. Let's say you roll another five, then you get another roll. And there's other things you're going for. You're going for a stray, you're going for three of a kind. There's a lot of things to it. I won't get into it, but Yahtzee is the most points. It's the name of the game, obviously. If you get one Yahtzee, it's 50 points. If you get another one, okay, it's an extra 100 points. And that's enough, like, no matter what I do, like, let's say, which Carter did get two Yahtzees, but we'll get into that. No matter what I do, he's gonna win. Like even if I did good, 150 extra points, if I didn't get my Yahtzee. So anyways, we're playing, right? And he has May under his arm. He said, okay, like blow. If you're like familiar with like games, you know, like, you know, when people like blow on dice, like it's good luck, like we do stupid things. So he like held the cup up to May, right? That roll, Yahtzee. I'm just like, no freaking way. So of course I'm like breathing here. I'm like shoving the thing in her mouth. She's like, mom, stop. I never got a Yahtzee. He does it again. Another Yahtzee. I'm like, ah! I was so upset. Sorry, I just screamed into the microphone. I was so mad. So then, of course, I flipped the table. I'm done. I don't want to play anymore. That's cheating. That literally was cheating. Okay, so that was a tough night for us. What else happened? Oh, my gosh. This morning, <laughs> this was so dumb of me. And I swear Carter was the most disappointed. This is probably the only time I've ever seen him disappointed in me. <laughs> okay, so yesterday, like I said, he dropped me off at the recital on his way to the haircut. 
And Carter never drives anymore. I always drive because I take him to the library in the mornings. And so he adjusts the seat and his car is a our car. Sorry, it's ours. Oh, speaking of, I went out to start my Tahoe the other day because I was like, oh shit, I haven't started that car in a long time. Dead. I said, nah, we'll deal with it another time. I haven't driven my Tahoe. I have a 2002 Tahoe, my girl. The way I've been treating her, you wouldn't think that she's my girl, but I love her. Anyway, she didn't start. So I have a, well, I have jumper cables, but I also have like a self jumper cable situation, which honestly was a great buy. It Maybe people don't have old cars like me for their whole entire life, but that's been so clutch. Anyways, our Civic, I think it's like a 2014 Civic that Carter has. And the seat though is like one where you pull the tab and then it moves, right? It's not electric. It like all of a sudden, like, let's say you sit down, you pull that tab, you're like all the way to the back. Well, I adjusted it before we left, but like not very good. So we're pulling up out of our garage and you get to the gate and then you have to like, wait, you have to get really close. And then it like slowly opens. It just like monitors that you're there. Well, we got there. So I had my foot on the brakes and I wanted to adjust and it flew me back. So then my foot wasn't touching the pedal. So we almost hit the gate. <laughs> and Carter's like, whoa. So I like reached to hit the thing. And then I readjusted my seat and I looked over at him and he was like, babe. I was like, I've never done that before. I'm so sorry. I will not crash our car because he's the one who calls it our car. I said, I'm so sorry. And he was stressed. Honestly, if he wasn't there, I would have been like, holy fuck. But when Carter's in the situation, I like always am trying to like, you know, make sure the mood is light. Oops. It's okay. Everything was okay. I think I had another story that I wrote on here. Oh, wait. Okay. This is just like a small little story. Am I already getting carried away? Carter's been doing this stretching program on YouTube. So he'll put it on the TV and then stretch. And I told you guys at the beginning of the year, my New Year's resolution was to start stretching and be able to do the splits by the end of the year. It's not going well. But I have been recently, like this past month, I've been really good about it, but I was off there for a while. So anyways, Carter just wants to get like more limber for his like lifts and stuff. So he's been following this like AKG stretching situation so he was doing the butterfly sweat stretch and if you don't know what the butterfly stretch is which if any of us went to school i feel like we did this in gym class you know you put your feet together so your knees are out and then you try and like push down on your knees or even just doing this is a stretch i'm doing it right now if you're not watching sorry and anyway so that's the butterfly stretch so he calls me out he's like babe can you push down my knees so I come over, right? So I'm facing him like face to face and I'm like pushing and it's, you know, obviously there's resistance just from his, like his tendons and his muscles and everything. And he's like, okay, push a little harder. But then of course I'm face to face with him. So I was, I was thinking like, okay, what a cute little time to smooch. So I lean in to kiss him and I kiss him and he's like, babe, because when I leaned in, obviously I was pushing down on his knees. Like I totally forgot that I was like stretching him out and he started screaming. <laughs> of course he started laughing. He's like, oh my God. So I was like, sorry, I was trying to be cute. Oh my goodness. Anywho. Okay. Let's get into, oh, books. Okay. Honestly, kind of a disappointing week. I'm going to be so fucking for real with you. Watch Me Disappear by Janelle Brown. One of the books that LaDonna got me, my grandmother, or borrowed me, I should say. I did not finish this. I skimmed it. I finished it. I, I could not. Like, the entire time, every chapter, like, they kind of had you on the hook, but, like, not really. I just dreaded picking it up. Like, I would pick it up, and then I would be on my phone. Like, I was saying to Carter a million times, I'm like, oh, I hate, I hate this, but I... I personally cannot like not finish a book. Like if I started it, I'm going to finish it. So by the time I got to like, let's say page, I think it was probably like 250 in this page is, or this book is like 350 pages. I just started like skimming it. And then I looked up on Goodreads and people had good reviews of it. It just wasn't for me. Basically, there's this little family of three. There's a daughter who's like a teenager maybe in high school, teenager, and then two parents. And the mom had disappeared a year prior. And now they're like, you know, pronouncing her dead. Like they never found her body. 
And then the daughter starts having like premonitions, which I already just like don't believe in that sort of thing. So I was like, oh God, the woo woo bullshit. And so then the dad is independently like finding things out, like potentially an affair. Like it had a good idea, but I just like, I don't know if it was the writing. I could not get behind it. So I don't recommend that book. If you like it, no, hey, I, I don't know. I just like could not get into it. Now let's talk about a book I could get into, but I don't think I would recommend this and we'll talk about it, obviously. This was another book that LaDonna recommended me, A Stolen Life, a memoir by J.C. Duggard. This little girl in 1991 was kidnapped by a couple, but obviously a very corrupted, fucked up man. And she was held captive for 18 years. She was... 11 at the time when she was stolen on her way to school and then she was free at age 29 had two kids at age 14 and 17 you know the situation trigger warning trigger warning trigger warning but so good such an easy quick read and I'm like a true crime sort of person which this is just her recollection of it which was obviously I'm sure so hard for her to talk about like all of the trauma like that is so sad and so heartbreaking but how wonderful that she survived and lived and is okay and has two daughters obviously that she loves but like it was just her telling like the story of it I read this in a day a day and a half maybe it was so good but if like that stuff is like triggering to you do not read this and I don't know if I should like recommend it knowing that it's like dark uh but I love this sort of thing and I love real life instances obviously it's so sad but it's also so positive and she like wrote this to like just tell anybody obviously not in a situation like this but like to be resilient and like you can do hard things this is like the hardest thing like are you kidding me there are so many times that she obviously like oh my god I just can't even imagine it just made me think about so many things and honestly it led me and Carter into conversations about our children and like you know for example I see on TikTok a lot like women talking about how they don't allow their kids to go to sleepovers and that sort of thing and I'm like I get it like you just never know when an adult figure is like not okay and like your child is oh my gosh so vulnerable and like the things that can happen and like ways that we can prevent you know things from happening it was like really good to have those conversations okay and then next now I'm reading and I'm about halfway through I read at the gym this morning Darkest Fear by Harlan Coben and this was also from LaDonna so this is the last one that LaDonna gave me I talked to her on the phone yesterday for like two hours and I was telling her all about my updates on all of the books I obviously lied to her about the watch me disappear well I just didn't talk about it that much I didn't tell her that I didn't like it because I know I didn't want to make her sad but I really like this. And I heard that it's a series when I looked it up or I saw. I think somebody messaged me too. So I think I'm going to go to Book Reads today. Bitch, Book Reads? I think I'm going to go to Half Price Books and see if he has others. I bet these books, this book itself says $6.50, which this came out in 2000. She probably got it in 2000. Six dollars and fifty cents. I feel like an old book like this at half price books would be like three bucks. So I might get more. It's honestly so good. Like it's such a quick read. I love this little. If you're listening, you know how books back in the day, like our parents' books that they read, were tiny. Like this little book is tiny. The font is like that super specific font that they always used. I'm honestly just like flipping through it. The author, it's funny currently, but I think it's gonna get kind of freaky. Basically, let me send, set the plot. I don't know if I recommend this if you're not into like old timey mystery books, but this man, he's like 34, a uh, ex-girlfriend came to him and her 13 year old son needs a bone marrow transplant to live. She also tells him that, okay, well, I won't spoil it for anybody if you want to read this, but then he's like trying to figure out apparently and I'm guessing the other books in the series he figures things out like people come to him for help like you know doing investigative work so that's what he's doing and he's like uncovering like not good things super good loving that but that's my last book that I have here in the house you guys will also be happy I was looking yesterday or the day before into library cards so there's a public library not far from here that I think I would go to so I'm trying to figure out what I need to do to get that in order and then we'll see how that goes I do really like and me and Carter want to have a library when we have a house probably not our first house, but the second or third. And I love just having books. I know, but I also, okay, hear me out. Girl math. 
I can justify the money. I don't spend money on many things. And I feel like books, like knowledge, even though if they're fiction, nonfiction, fiction, I think reading is just good for you. So it's also like investing in just like my well-being. So I'm always going to support that. Okay, that's how I justify it to myself. Okay, product of the week. This is like so random, but I saw a TikTok, of course, I learn everything on TikTok, about this girl. She was showing her lock screen and on the front, she had a little like widget. You know how there's widgets? I recently discovered them not that long ago. I use them on like my homepage. It just shows me the date. I don't get that crazy with it, but you can now do them on the front and maybe this has always been a thing, but you can have little ones. So there's this little widget you download, and this is the product, an app called Pedometer. Okay, if you like walking like me, and if you don't like walking, I think this would be good for you to get into walking because walking is great for you. You guys know my feelings about that. And it allows you to get a widget on your home screen that shows you what you walk. Because every time I walk, I'm like having to pull up the health app and then scrolling down. And it's like such a hassle right now, 8,408 steps. Like it just has it on my front lock screen. So I highly recommend that if you're like intrigued by that stuff. I do have an Apple watch. I just never wear it anymore. So like if you do stuff like that and it just shows you, I get it. But if you don't and you kind of use your health app like I do, such a good find. Okay. That is all I have to say about all of those things. Let's get into the topic. I'm so excited. We're going to be talking about communication in dating, in relationships, in any sort of relationships with friends. Communication is so key, obviously. And I think communication itself is like an easy thing. Honestly, I think it's more having conversations, especially in dating and relationships, and our emotions tied to the conversation. I think the harder part of like hard conversations is regulating our emotions. It's not necessarily the communication, but also it's like communicating with those emotions. Like that is the hard part and the scary part and the vulnerable part. And I'm so excited. I have like little tips. I have just like my overall thoughts on it and how to get better at communication. And like, this is something we can work on our whole entire lives. Like I believe we can always work on these sort of things. And I think we should. And when you're younger, communication is obviously harder. We all learn just like how we deal with conflict and then how we are able to communicate that. So that's what we're going to get into questions at the end, obviously, but yay! I asked Carter this week, I was like, I don't know what to talk about. And he was like, what did he say? He said expectations, like how to have realistic expectations in dating or relationships. I was like, okay, babe, like love the idea. But I was like, but what do you mean? And basically he went on this tangent about like, you know, having real ex- whoa, realistic expectations for your partner, but also like looking inward and making sure that like you're doing those things. Like if you're not a trustworthy, like communicative bitch, like you expect that from your partner, but you're not even doing it, like that's not okay. And he basically broke it down into like working on yourself, which I think just like this entire podcast is about, and I can do an episode about that, but like working on yourself. But we were on our way to school this morning and he's like, are you going to talk about it? And I was like, babe, I sat down and I was like, ah. like, I just like didn't know which route to take. I was like, I understand what you're saying, but I was like, I'm actually going to talk about communication. And then we talked about communication on the way to school. And I have little tidbits from him that were helpful. And I loved having those conversations with him because any sort of conversations you can have with your partner about dating, about relationships, I think is just overall good. Like I'm still... And I will always be learning Carter because he'll always be changing, just like I'll always be changing. And what used to be won't always be. So I think just keeping conversations going, I'm already kind of jumping into the topic, is good about everything. I think having conversations unrelated to like, let's say you want to talk to your partner about sex, even having conversations about totally other things, but like hard things will make it easier to then talk about sex or whatever the thing is. So just like constantly communicating, I think is obviously so good. In today's day and age, I think a lot of people go to work, they get home, they watch a TV show together, they sit on their phones. You don't really have 
conversations or you do it's like super superficial like how was your day oh this happened and I think over time that can be super harmful and just the less that you have hard conversations the harder they're going to be to have as you go does that make sense or like the more you have the easier it is like when things are just open to talk about like it's just constantly this line of open communication but if you never have hard conversations it's going to be more scary to bring things up when something finally needs to be spoken about because you never talk about hard things if that makes sense so we're going to talk about conversations in relationships but also in dating as well obviously i like to try and relate this to everybody oh my gosh you guys i totally forgot to bring up the tiktoks of the week which there's just one that had my blood boiling and honestly i think people have differing opinions on this however me and carter talk about this a lot and it's something he was raised with or by and actually my friend natalie and i talk about this too because her boyfriend is the same way but i saw this tiktok and i'm sure maybe you guys saw it too where it's one of those fucking interviewers on the street which i hate those i really do and he's asking men okay to rank in order of most important to least important right or like who would you save first if your house was burning down mom daughter wife the amount of men that said mom daughter wife i just like nope the only correct option or order in my opinion is wife daughter mom and again I never wanted to seem like I hate moms. I love Carter's mom. I love Carter's mom and he loves his mom. But he was also raised that his parents, right? Like the spouse comes first. Like your partner will be your constant. Even your kids are going to fucking get the hell out. Your parents are going to be gone. Like they raised you. But then the next step of life is like your own family. And I do believe in it. And maybe this is traditional. And I know people probably feel weird. And people are like, no, nope, actually it's daughter, wife, mom. And like as much as you probably love your kids, I get it. I get where the idea is. That one doesn't trigger me at as much but men that literally put their mothers above their wives is like so crazy and i always always think about when i think about raising children with carter i think about raising this child to go into the world like i don't think about them to me i don't really ever think about them in childhood other than like the fleeting like you know what sports will they do or what this but like i want to raise a little human like i want them to be ready when they are 18 to like be self-sufficient and be able to go into the world and like start their own life like i don't want to be their entire life i want to be there for them duh but i don't want if i have sons i don't want them to be obsessed with me and i don't want them to put me above their spouses like there are moms out there that want that and that's fucking crazy but anyways i had to mention that okay now let's get back into communication dating communication this is going to be light because i have a few thoughts on this number one i think the most important things you can do in dating this doesn't really have as much to do with communication but the boundaries how we've talked about i have the episode boundaries and dating go listen to that if you haven't because i think setting the tone for the relationship is important and i had this conversation with carter while we were driving to school how of course, there needs to be communication when you are dating, but I don't think you should be having that many arguments or any real big arguments when you're in the early dating stages. And there's a few things that come into play. Like I was explaining to Carter, I'm like, yeah, but yeah, younger people, I was like, you know, girls that date guys and they're Snapchatting a million girls or, you know, when you go out and get drunk and like something always happens, somebody gets jealous. Like there's all these like little tiny things, but... I think number one, knowing when you are exclusive and when you are not and defining that is important in the relationship because prior to being exclusive, if you've gone on three dates with a man and you expect him to not be going on other dates, not Snapchatting, not doing whatever the hell he wants with his life, I don't think that's realistic and I don't think that's fair until you guys have become exclusive and had the conversation about how you're only seeing each other and if that happens early on great but i'm just saying there is a time and a place to be up in arms if you have defined the relationship and then he is snapchatting the girls and doing all of that thing one i think that's horrible fucking character and i think he's just a piece of shit but then that elicits a conversation but if you are freaking out in the early early stages because you're just attached and that is a different thing 
Okay, does that make sense? So communication early on, I think the best way you can set yourself up for then eventually dating is just having conversations about broad, big topics. Like for example, and I know I talk about this all the time, me and Carter went on the picnic, but we talked about just financials, how we were raised, our thoughts on, you know, abortions, on infidelity, on like big topics. And there weren't like, we were on our third date, we weren't gonna have arguments, but it was a good thing to talk about those because if he had answers that like didn't align with how I viewed those things, like that would just be a huge red flag and that person would not be my person. So I think in just in dating, I think communicating about those big topics or for instance, when things come up, just being like, yeah, I don't really love when, you know, partners do this, or I think it's disrespectful. Like these little things I think are good. Okay. It's when you get into relationships. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I get a lot of questions from girls that are like, how do I bring this up? Or like, how do I ask him this? Or how do I, and it often comes down to just communicating. So I wanted to try and give you guys my best tips for communication in general. And I think when you're young and like, for example, if you're in college, these conversations are hard and there's a lot of shit that goes down when you're younger dating that like isn't normal. Like the Snapchatting and the going to the parties and like having girl best friends or like them being around girls. Like that's like not, I feel like normal real life. Once you're an adult and you have jobs, like dating just looks totally different and conversations are very different. But I think number one, I grew up in a household where we didn't really like have deep conversations. Like I didn't grow up in a normal household where, you know, mom and dad were sitting down, we're talking about all of these things. Like we really just like didn't speak about anything. I was just explaining to Carter how like I never had the sex talk growing up because I was raised by a man, my dad. And I'm not shaming, like again, whenever I talk about these things, like I think my childhood was amazing, but I never had that talk. Like my dad was, of course, again, just like a man. I'm sure it was uncomfortable for him. So I learned everything like online or through friends or whatever. But for example, Carter was like, I was so uncomfortable. My dad always brought it up in a weird way. And I worked with the nanny fam and they are like an everything goes family. Like they talk about anything and everything. I think that's amazing. And I know some people that are like, kind of prude it would be like oh my gosh like no you shouldn't talk about that but I'd rather my children learn things from me okay I'm getting into a different conversation but I think being raised some people were raised in a household where you can openly communicate about things and I think those people are way better set up to then have hard conversations in relationships or you were like me where we didn't talk about a damn thing so I like had to learn once I was an adult and I wasn't the best at it my college boyfriend I'm sure I freaked out or like had moments of like whatever so it's just a learning process but I think just having hard conversations with other people too will then help you with your partner but obviously hard conversations with your partner are very different because you can disagree with friends on things, but like that's not gonna affect your life. You guys have independent lives. With a partner, like you are hopefully in a relationship to have a lifelong partnership. So disagreeing on certain things is huge because you need to navigate life with them, raising kids with these different mindsets, okay? I'm really going into a side tangent here, but I just meant that Hard conversations are hard conversations. However, with your partner, there's a lot more emotions and there's a lot more at stake. So I understand where it can be scary and or, however, the biggest thing in a relationship, we hear it all the time, is communication. Because like I was talking about earlier, the less hard conversations you have, the harder it's going to be to bring things up. So first, I think it's so important to know yourself and your emotions and how you are in hard times. Like if in your past with relationships, you start crying, you start screaming, which yelling is never okay in any circumstance ever. For a man, for women, if you guys are yelling, that is extremely toxic. Like that is not normal. And I highly, highly, highly you suggest figuring that out via therapy, via just like searching inward 
because showing your kids that yelling at each other like is how you communicate is so bad because then they're gonna be raised thinking that that's normal that's another thing kids can be raised with like parents that yelled at each other that's crazy to me i have never been that person like i've never yelled at a partner ever it's just never going to help any situation ever ever and that's that so for example, if that's how you are, again, like self-assess. And I think a lot of people just like need to take a second. Like if a conversation gets like brought up to you and you weren't ready for it, I think communicating then about just waiting, like saying, hey, I might get super flustered. I might get angry. So if I need a second to like cool down, just again, and this is another part of communication, like telling your partner and anybody could respect that. Like, for example, if Carter was like, I need to cool down. Cool. Like you don't need to have this conversation as fast as humanly possible. Like if this is a big topic, there is no rush. Okay. So I think like, if you know yourself and you know, or you get emotional, like sit your partner down before and be like, okay, I might start crying. Like, again, I'm going to take a moment to like compose or just know that like these emotions, cause it's just like, I feel very strongly about this. Being as vulnerable and open, I think is, again, only a net positive and telling them like, hey, this is how I, you know, figure these things out and it invokes all of these horrible feelings in me, but I'm gonna try and like keep it in. And if you can tell me like, hey, let's just step away for a second. I think that's wonderful. Figuring out how to regulate your emotions is key because I think a lot of times why we scream and why there's tears is because we are just getting so emotional and then we start like going back and forth and back and forth and then actually nothing's being resolved. So just like take time. Again, no rush to these conversations because if it's a big topic, if it's any conversation, it's not life or death right in this moment. Like you can take as much time as you need and you should. My favorite TikTok that I've ever seen was a woman who explained to me that when she is upset about something with her husband, she goes to him, okay? Because the next tip that I wanted to say is don't attack your partner, never lead with you. Like you only do this or you only say this or you don't care or you like, that is just always gonna put somebody on the defense. Like think about if your boyfriend came to you and was like just attacking you, like immediately you're then just trying to defend yourself and that is them just projecting or you projecting. For example, like if you say, let's say are feeling distant from your partner and you go to him and you're like, even if you lead with, I feel like you just don't care about us anymore. That is like accusatory. So what this woman said in her TikTok was, I like to go to my husband and say, the story that I'm telling myself, okay, which is genius, is that you don't care because this morning when you didn't respond to my question, like it hurt my feelings. And so the story I'm telling myself, even though I know that's probably not true, is that you don't care. And I think that puts it in such a good light because a lot of the times we get worked up or we project our feelings onto them, it's all made up in our head. Like we come to a conclusion. So I think that is a wonderful way to like break it down and be like, okay, I know that this might not be what you meant by this thing, or you didn't mean to hurt my feelings. But the story that I'm telling myself is that, you know, yada yada whatever does that make sense i think that's a beautiful thing i think another way to bring up if let's say you want to bring up a topic about a certain thing i used to do this all the time like for example if you have a boyfriend who like follows the instagram models oh my gosh i would say and i don't think i use it in this instance but i would be like oh my gosh i was with my friend natalie and she was talking about how her and her boyfriend you know he was doing this or like they were just talking about how it's so disrespectful to like follow Instagram models. And I thought it was like a really good conversation and paint it in the light of like, you were having a conversation with your best friend about whatever that thing is. Okay. Or she went on a date and the guy did this, like something about the topic that you want to discuss because that then doesn't again, attack them. It's not saying like, Hey, I want this, this, and this, but it starts just a conversation. Okay, it's not an argument. It's not you attacking them. It was so clutch because that is how then I would segue into like a conversation with my current partner. I haven't used that with Carter because we don't really have these sort of issues. But if there was something that I wanted to talk to my partner about, but I was scared to because we've all been there. It's like so scary to open up and just be vulnerable about things like 
especially like the Instagram and the social media, like it makes us feel so dumb. Like I used to find myself and I'm like, why does this bother me? But it does. Okay. And that's it. It does. And that's valid. So a way to bring that up, I'd be like, oh, I was having this conversation with this person. And then you start just having a conversation with them and then it can turn into whatever it turns in there. That's like one thing I used to do. And I think that's a genius little trick, but the most important part of this communication conversation is if you don't feel safe bringing up things to your partner, if you know for a fact, they're going to get mad. If every time you've brought up conversations or hard topics in the past and they get mad at you that is a huge red flag not in my opinion that is just a huge red flag and either you go to them and say hey you need to work on this like if you really love and care about me every time I bring up something you just get mad and upset with me that doesn't fly okay we are never going to have a healthy and happy relationship if every single time I'm now scared to bring things up because I know you're going to get mad and I'm just trying to work through these things with you or you leave because it is a staple. And like I said, if you cannot have hard conversations, your whole entire life is going to be made up of hard conversations, raising kids together. Like you need to be able to talk about anything and everything. And it's one thing to just be scared because you know, not hearing what you want to is scary or like them having a differing opinion or vice versa, whatever. But if they have made it clear that they just don't want to communicate, that is just a deal breaker in a relationship, period. If you cannot speak, you cannot last in that relationship. So I think knowing the difference between it being a you problem, like having a hard time just opening up and communicating. And again, it gets easier. The more conversations you have, the easier it gets. But the longer you wait or the absolute worst thing you can do is harbor these horrible feelings that you have. So let's say he did this to make you upset, but you're so scared to bring it up. So you hold on to it, but you think about it all the time. And then this thing happens and then this thing happens. And then finally you guys get into a conversation or an argument and then you are pulling up X, Y, Z from months ago. That is so toxic and so not helpful. And it just like adds so much flame to a fire that wasn't even there to begin with. You're having a conversation about this, but because you never brought this up in the past, you're freaking out about all of these things. Like that is helpful to nobody. And honestly, it's not super fair. And so when things happen, I think again, take time. If you need time to sit and think, do that, but then bring it up within a day, two days. Like if you harbor these things for too long, it is only at the detriment to your relationship and yourself. Like I have friends that come to me for advice. And for example, my friend was going through like a breakup recently and she was like festering on something and wanted to ask. And you will sit and lose your goddamn mind. We as women will sit and lose our mind for days on end rather than just bringing it up and getting it over with. Like I understand if it is essentially at the end of a breakup or like at the end of a relationship and you feel like this is the nail in the coffin, that that's scary, but also pretending to keep the peace and keeping it in your head just to save this relationship that probably is not a good thing to begin with is not helping anything and it's only making you lose your mind. Like the worst case scenario is you bringing up the topic, them disagreeing or getting upset or not having a good reaction and then that's that. Like at least then you can know your answer that this person is maybe not good for you or what have you and move on. But you sitting there every day worrying about this or being upset that he's following these Instagram models or being upset that he's snapchatting these girls and every day it rips you up just because you're too scared to bring it up and have that conversation okay that's not okay and that is not good and that is why I wanted to talk about this because that can make or break a relationship when you could just have the conversation greatest scenario best case scenario I said he's like oh my gosh I had no idea I'll delete this or I'll unfriend them on this amazing but instead we spend weeks and months on end just like freaking out in our head without bringing it up. And then we come up with our own scenarios. We're like, he likes this girl or he does this or he hooked up with this person or whatever the thing is. I'm just using that as an example when that probably isn't even true, but we're just losing our goddamn minds. Nobody wants to lose their minds. Okay. It doesn't need to be like that in a relationship. I am telling you a hundred percent fact that me and Carter have never, I have quite 
literally never been stressed out about something with Carter because if there has been certain things that have been brought to my attention or like that I was worried about or a topic that we don't agree on, I bring it up because I can't fester. Like I will lose my goddamn mind and I can't live like that. I can't focus on anything else and I don't think you should. So I bring things up immediately and that's we've hit every single conversation or topic. And that way, let's say like something happens, it's easy because I know like, especially with Carter, he is like the most calm, like never even slightly raises his voice like even keeled like normal person in hard conversations he just like lays down the facts he is like i you know understand where you're coming from he's so reassuring and not every man is going to come that way i understand that i got lucky i think his upbringing was incredible however i think if your partner isn't that way talking to them about that and being like hey it's really hard for me to have conversations when, you know, like you get mad or whatever. And I cannot ever express enough that if he cares and loves you, if he cares about you and loves you, he will work on those sort of things. And it's not going to change overnight. And if you have a hard time communicating, if you're like, oh, I'm the bitch that holds on to everything in my head and then it all comes out, that's okay. I was there. I used to be that person because when you're like not as confident and you're insecure and let's say it's your first relationship, you don't want to mess it up. You're like, oh, I don't want to freak out about this or like, you know, I don't want to bring this up because I'm trying to be cool and whatever, but it's just not helpful to anybody and you're the one suffering. Your boyfriend has no idea that you're freaking out about this certain thing. Like I get it. I've been there, but I've worked on it. So like every single relationship I tried every single time, I'm like, I know that I feel this way when I hold on to things. So like I would just open up you know if I got emotional like again when I was in college this probably looked very different I probably was more irrational but every single time I get better and I reflect and I then the next time try and be better and that's all you can do and everything is a work in progress and I wanted to say like my first episode about confidence and you know being accepting of yourself and just becoming the best version of you that is the best thing you can do to like constantly work on yourself and you know your mental health your physical health you will always become the better person for your relationship i think i just worded that weirdly like if you want to be the best person in your relationship and you want to have the best relationship that you can you need to work on yourself and you need to constantly be analyzing like in that last conversation we had you know I wish I didn't have, I wouldn't have said this, or I wish that I would have been calmer when talking about this or vice versa. And then it makes it easier. Or you leave a conversation and you're like, oh, there's some things like I wish I would have said. Then, you know, that night being like, hey, when we had that conversation, you know, and I think sometimes when you have a heated conversation or an intense conversation, it's nice for a day or two later to come back and be like, hey, I was like reflecting. And I'm sorry, there have been like probably a handful of times with Carter where we've had like these big conversations and I've been upset. I remember one instance, I had been ruminating on something for a little bit longer than I wanted to. Or I had these like really weird feelings in my body and I was sitting here on the bed and he was sitting here, I think studying or doing something. And I just started crying and he's like, babe, talk to me. Like what's going on? And I'm like, I hate that I'm having these feelings and I know they're not rational and you know, it's probably just something from, I don't know what, just like, you know, trauma or whatever from past relationships that I'm having a hard time with, but I feel like this. And we have a conversation and he's reassuring and he always like has my back and he's always on my team. And like Carter has never once blamed me or made me feel like my feelings are irrational, even when they are like, he's always so reassuring, which makes these conversations so much easier. Like if he was attacking me, I don't know what I would do. So that's why if your partner is that way, you need to figure that out or get out because sometimes like we need to take accountability and we're not perfect. And as crazy as women, sometimes we come in hot and we're freaking out and we've already like done this. We've all been there. Like that is who we are. We're crazy bitches at heart. And I love that about us because it's such a also powerful thing. Like women are so like our intuition and our gut is really just like magical in my opinion, but we are like, we can be like psycho. And I think there's a point where you can take accountability, but if like you are really trying to have conversations and your partner is the one prohibiting that from happening or stopping that from happening, 
you need to have that conversation. So don't put it all on him. Be like, well, I can't have a conversation with you because you always get mad. Like, you know, are there better things that we can do? Is there a way that I can go about this? Or maybe ask your partner, like, do you need time to step aside? Or like, what's the best way for us to communicate? But anyways, for example, when I was freaking out and I cried and Carter made me feel better, it was like two days later. I was probably on my period. I definitely was on my period. I like felt so embarrassed that I had this thing, but I felt immensely better. I always feel better after having the conversation, even if it's like something that's not solvable. Like every single time I've ever been upset with something with Carter or about my own life, but like talking with Carter always just like lifts the weight off. And then two days later, I'm like, oh my gosh, babe. I'm like, I'm so sorry that I was like acting like that. I was just like so fired up and I was like feeling this way because work was this way. And like, there's so many factors that come into, again, our emotions. And that's why conversations are hard. Conversations aren't hard. Speaking is not hard. It's like the emotions that it invokes and like, you know, our current state of mind. If you're on your period, if you're not, if you had a bad work day, like that can all come out in these things, even if they don't have to do with the conversation at hand. So always like days later and I'm like, and by the way, like when I said this, I didn't mean that or like I didn't bring up this, but this is another thing that I was struggling with. And then again, it's like a lesser conversation, but because we've had these hard conversations, I can then just say that. Does that make sense? I hope that this was helpful. I can do another episode on more tips and steps, but it's always just gonna be a work in progress and every single person is different and how we communicate, like how we match with somebody else is different. You know, if you have like a super calm dude that like lets you just let it rip and he's like, okay, babe, your conversations and communication with that person are going to be different than some psychomaniac who just gets mad at you. So it's always situational. If you are, you know, dating, like it's all going to depend. And we change in the way we have conversations. If you go to therapy, like I think they give you great tools on conversations and how to bring things up, but it really is make or break. And like I said, a hundred times, if you in the future, like if you plan on having kids, getting married, finances, if you can't have conversations right now about work, about finances, about Snapchat, about Instagram, about, you know, him hanging out with his friends, like how are you going to have conversations when you guys need to save money and you're strapped for cash? Or if the kids like have some sort of illness and like something's going on, like we don't want to think about these big, horrible things, but like shit's going to happen in your life. You're going to lose a parent. I was talking to my friend about this yesterday, Natalie, and like grieving, like people become a different human when grieving rightfully so but like how are you going to get through those huge huge things if you can't even have conversations about these little things does that make sense so if you know that about yourself and have a hard time with that i would just work on it and it's not going to be perfect and again every hard conversation you have you're going to learn and you're going to like reflect and then you're going to move forward and do better and that's all you can do so like if you're in a place right now and you know that you're like you come in hot and there's like all of these different things. That's okay. We learn and we get better and that's all we can do. Okay. I'm going to try and pick questions that are communication based. Cause like I said, a lot of them are, cause a lot of things when you're asking for advice with a boyfriend or a partner, like you just need to speak to them. Like I can't give you the right thing to do. It's something you need to figure out together and work through. So I have a few and then I'll do some other random ones. Okay. This was a long one that was submitted through DMs. She said, my boyfriend has his two year long hookup buddy still in his contacts. She has contacted him three times now from the time we started dating in September to just recently in March. The second time she reached out, she called while we were together. That then led to a conversation of me asking to know if she contacted him again. Well, he didn't tell me about when she reached out in March and it came up randomly in a conversation last night that she did and he texted her back. It was a happy birthday text. He doesn't get why I'm upset that he didn't tell me and now I'm wanting to ask him to block her number since we are literally moving in together in August. Girl, what the fuck? Can I ask him to block her? How do I explain how this is not making me feel good? Okay, so... Here is the thing. Communication is key. What a great episode to ask this on. Okay. I would just come to him and say, hey, I think that it is disrespectful in a relationship to communicate with exes. If like that is something you feel, which I feel that way too. I think any normal person would. 
we are going to move in together. And I hope that maybe you've had conversation about getting married. Like if we're going to be long-term having a relationship with this girl is like literally not necessary in my opinion. Okay. Wait, let me think about this as if I was talking to my boyfriend, but he would never fucking do that. He would be like, this guy sucks. Okay. Cause Carter and I have all the same opinions on these sort of things, but uh, it just makes me, I would just explain how it makes you feel. I talked about this last episode. Like it makes me feel not good and jealous. And I just don't see the reason. And if you need this girl in your life, that is okay. But I am going to then remove myself from the situation because I think it's disrespectful and I don't appreciate that. And I will give you the same courtesy. Like I don't continue to speak to boys that I've hooked up with or exes and either he respects your wishes or he doesn't. And I think it's going to be hard. But again, like you can't sit here and fester and wait for the next time that she reaches out. I think that's crazy. I get it. I can understand like a happy birthday text. Boys are so dumb. And like, it's whatever. If they've only talked, like if she's reaching out, it's clear that she's the one reaching out. Thankfully he's not. And like, maybe he's just being nice, even though he doesn't need to be. I get it. I get it you know, how he could view that as like a whatever thing. But I think just then expressing, like if he cares about you and loves you, I talk about this every episode, he will not do that thing. Like if you tell him that it hurts you and it's you find it disrespectful, he will stop. And if he doesn't, that's the problem and he's not the one. So that's how I would go about that. Okay, wait, I just wanted to answer this one. She said, what do you think about waiting for marriage to have sex? I think that's a wonderful thing if you wanna do it. Do I personally partake in that? No. But I think, of course, do that if you want to. Okay, what do I do if my boyfriend doesn't want to spend time with my family? We've been dating for five months. I would first assess what that means to you. Are you close with your family? And do you want to hang out with them often? Like, is that something that's important to you? If it is, and you would like your partner to spend time with them, that's kind of just a deal breaker. He's probably not the one. But... If let's say you are close to your family, but it doesn't really matter to you, clearly I think it does. So I would have the conversation with him and say, hey, like I'm really close with my family. I love them. I want to spend time with them. So is there something that's like holding him up? Is there a reason he doesn't want to? Like I would allow him to like express why he doesn't want to. And you know, that's funny because for example, I'm not super close with my family. So I feel like if let's say Carter's family lived close and he wanted to hang out with them all the time, depending on the scenario, you know, it's just a conversation. So like, maybe it's not for any good reason. Maybe he's not close with his family. So like, he just doesn't want to hang out all the time. Like, let's say you hang out with your family all the time. I think it's a fair boundary of him to have. Like he doesn't have to hang out with your family. Like I don't think it's bad on him, but it's just something that you two need to come to agreement on. And so I would just have a conversation with him and be like, what's the hold up? Like, do you just like not want to? But if that's something that's important to you and this is gonna bug you all the time, like that is a huge thing. And if he's just not going to, like I just don't think you guys are super compatible or like that's not gonna fit with your lifestyle if you see them all the time. So I would just like have a conversation. I know that's scary because it could not turn out well, but rather to figure out that he's not the one and that you need somebody who wants to hang out with your family if you do that a lot. So better to like, you know, weed out the guy that's not for you and find the one that is. So I would just have a conversation. Is it weird if he still has pics of his ex on his phone and all over social media? Because I think it, yes. I personally think yes, but again, boys are so dumb and I think sometimes they're like, what? Like they really don't know. I don't think they're, you know, malicious at times. I think they're just like, oh, but I would just then express like, hey, I think this is weird. Like, uh, I think it's disrespectful maybe. Like, could you maybe not? I don't know. Again, here's the thing. Like we each have our own boundaries. If he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. Like maybe he never looks at them. But again, like what's the point? You guys aren't together anymore. Like that's where my own feelings come in. But just have a conversation because I wouldn't like that either. I think that's weird. Ooh, tips for a solid morning routine. Trying to go on daily walks when I wake up. Just do it. 
You just have to rip the bandaid off. I go on a walk from seven to eight every morning. Sometimes I go to the gym or my apartment gym. If you live in an apartment, the biggest life hack, they typically have gyms, I say for the most part, go walk on the treadmill. I read, you can watch a YouTube video. Like that's such an easy, fun way to walk. If you're up scroll on TikTok, or just get outside. Oh, you would feel so much better. Walks literally saved my life. Like I am such a better human because I go on walks. Just get up and just commit at least 15 minutes. Just say, go on a walk around your block, okay? Just do it. Like there's literally, you know, whatever tips and tricks you need, maybe lay out your clothes so you're ready to go. Like if you have a hard time getting out of bed and getting motivated, but I promise you, like it'll make your day so much better when you start out with a walk, just a little bit of exercise in. It will improve your whole entire day. I'm not kidding. Oh, this is a great question. I love my friends, but I'm craving a bit more of a mature social life, but my friends aren't. Tips, you can make new friends. You can keep those friends for those sort of things, and then you can make new friends in different settings. I think she also asked, somebody asked, best ways to make girlfriends in a new city as a young professional. Number one, I think, what are your hobbies? There are leagues you can join. You can join sand volleyball. You can join pickleball. You can take workout classes. Um, I think nowadays too, there's so much shit on social media. Like look up on TikTok, like, you know, Dallas girls events. Like there's a girl who hosts all sorts of events. Jenna Palick does it in Austin. Like I think using the interweb is a great thing in today's day and age because it's hard. Like you're not probably at a coffee shop going to, you know, find a girl. Like it'd be very random if you did. But if there are certain hobbies that you have in those atmospheres, for sure. If you're just looking to meet people overall, I think yeah, going to just things, going to events, going to a bar by yourself, going to, you know, some sort of outing, like a sports situation or even a concert. Like you then are putting yourself in a position to meet new people. Uh, but finding people in that group, like for example, the girl that asked mature social life, like I don't really know exactly what that means, but whatever that means to you, I think then go to those situations by yourself or if let's say you have somebody at work maybe you're not the best of friends but like doing things with them until you then meet other people i think you can have different friends for different things and i think you should i think that's how friendships work i think we have friends for certain different parts of our life and that's that and if you grow apart from those people that's okay you're just like not into like whatever it is that you're doing like just going out to the bars every week that's normal that's okay and that happens has there ever been anything you and carter disagreed on that was hard to resolve conflict no and i know that's so annoying and people are probably like this bitch is fake as fuck but honestly no because not to say we haven't had hard situations to deal with, but we always just like figure out how to best figure, like get through that together. Like that's really it because we align on all of the big things. Like our political views are the same, you know, our views on religion, uh, on finances, on children, like I think when you find the person really for you and that you align on it, it's so seamless. And of course, not to say we don't have hard conversations and there are things, tiny little things that we disagree on. Like for example, in politics, like, you know, I might feel strongly about something and he doesn't feel as strong or, you know, something we might have differing opinions on, but the big, big things when it comes to us, we agree on like family time and just like family being in our relationship and friendships and, you know, going out and like all of these random things, we are the same exact human. So no, there's never really, we've never been against each other on things. We've had conversations about things that we disagree on and we've gotten, I've gotten heated. Carter's always like, okay, let's calm down. And I'm like, don't tell me to fucking calm down because I just get fired up. But no. And I know that's so annoying, but I wish there was that way we could overcome it. But I think in our dating stages, again, we talked about a lot of these big, hard issues. And so we knew right away that like we had the same views on a lot of things. So we haven't really had big conflict. Oh my gosh, somebody asked, makeup and sweating in the summer, help me. I actually was just talking to some of my friends about this, about finding like a tinted moisturizer or a tinted light something. Honestly, I have no tips. I am a sweaty ass bitch. I sweat, but I like sweating. But also I don't wear makeup a lot. The only times I wear makeup is when I'm filming. When I go out, I just don't. 
And I also like don't go to bars and stuff. I was thinking about that. I'm like people that like go out and like day drink in this heat. I think just like getting comfortable wearing lighter uh, makeup, you know, maybe brows, mascara and like a tinted something I think is perfect. Maybe bring like a toilet paper to like blot yourself because I'm sweaty too. I get it. Or just honestly accepting it. Like we all sweat. It sucks. It is what it is. I have no tips, no notes for me. Sorry, that wasn't helpful. Okay, let me do one more question. Okay, wait, two more. How to approach dating when you're a busy person? I think if you are serious about dating and like finding your person, you just have to make it work and squeeze it in. And I know that sucks and it's annoying or making just making time for it. Like if it's a priority and if it's not, you don't have to date, you don't have to, but making sure that your priorities are where they need to be. Like if it is a very big thing for you to like date and find your person, which is so normal, are there things that you're committed to that you don't need to be doing? Like, you know, can you lessen whatever the things you're busy with? And if you're just busy, like let's say you work two jobs, I commend you, that is so hard and it sucks, but you, you're just gonna have to squeeze it in. And then when you find your person, it'll all pay off but I don't have like really big tips. Like that's just how it's gonna be. You either have to make time or if you literally cannot because it's like financial, you're working, you're just gonna have to squeeze it in when you can. Get to it, girlfriend. Okay, and the other one I wanted to answer, dating advice for when you're not vibing with the apps. Putting yourself out there. Like if you're not using apps, you're gonna have to get outside. You're gonna have to go out with your friends. You're gonna have to join a pickleball league. You're gonna have to, you know, go to a coffee shop. You just gotta leave the house. And that's all I can tell you. Cause I don't really know. And people like, I've seen this on social media recently. Like we need to go back to like meeting people in the wild, which I honestly don't feel that strongly either way. Like. I think people like the story of it. Like people hate saying that they met on a dating app, but just because you met, maybe if it was something super niche and that you both were interested in, like let's say you both loved airplanes and met at an airplane convention. I get it. Like that's a good way to find your person. But if like you just want to be able to say like you met at the bar, like not on a dating app, I think the probability of that working out versus somebody meeting on a dating app is the same. How you met is such a small piece to the puzzle. Sorry, I'm going on a side tangent. But yeah, if you want to meet in the wild, you just got to get outside. You got to go out with your friends and try and like, hopefully your friends are in the same position. So they're open to like meeting people. So, you know, your three girlfriends go out, you try and find three guys or you join the leagues. That is my advice. I'm an anti meet in the wild. Honestly, like I loved that me and Carter met on Hinge and we would have never crossed paths otherwise. I don't think like, I don't know how because he would have graduated. He would have been in law school. I was nowhere near a law school. We both don't drink. We both don't go out. He would have then started his job. Like, I just don't think that me and Carter would have ever met if potentially, but I just like, I don't believe in that bullshit. So yeah, I think... If you just like hate the vibe, I get it. Like dating apps can sometimes be the worst, uh, but you're just going to probably have to put in a little more effort. And that's not a bad thing. It's just the reality of it. But okay, you guys. Oh, also one more question. I want to talk about this at the beginning. Somebody asked my summer plans. It was actually my girl, Avery. Um, I actually need to book flights today. I'm going home for a week. So in July, we have a family reunion in South Dakota and then I'm gonna go home and go up to the farm and see my grandma and my cousin and then see my mom, obviously. And it's like a week or two prior to Carter taking the bar. So he's not going to go. Obviously he cannot, especially then, but it'll be nice because he'll have the house. He'll probably be prime time studying stressed. So from like July 11th to like the 19th, I'm going to go home. And then in August, we're probably going to do some trips. Minneapolis to see my brother, Montana, uh, San Diego, a lot of trips because uh, August is our month because Carter is off before he works. But other than that, I'm trying to go to Atlanta and see my best friend, Jessica, maybe also in July or August. And yeah, so none coming up, none in June. Uh, but then July and August will probably be pretty busy with summer travel. So I'm excited for that. Other than that, I'm trying to save my money. So we aren't leaving the house. 
Okay. Time to add to the Roth IRA. Okay. Time to like me and Carter actually sat down and we're looking at a budget this week with his income come when he starts working and my potential, you know, my rough income. And we're like, okay, save for a house, the Roth IRAs, the investments, the the. So I'm excited for that though. I love saving money. It's just like, <clears throat> every time I see my savings go up, I'm like, yes. Or my Roth IRA. It's just, <clears throat> I love that. Every time I lose money, I'm like, no. I hate it. Okay, but anyways, side tangent, summer plans. You know, every once in a while, a little, I'm sure, spur of the moment trip will pop up, but that's what I have planned for now. So yeah, okay, you guys, I'm gonna get off of here. I love you. I hope you have the best week and I can't wait to see you next week. Okay, bye guys.